You are watching India Global with me, Parmeshwar Bhava. Now, in another attack on Canada, which was dubbed a safe haven for terrorists by the centre last week, our external affairs minister has said that the country harbours extremist elements and that India has conveyed its concerns in this regard to the United States. All this and more on this episode of India Global for you. A quick look at the headlines first. Dr. S. Jay Shankar tears into Justin Trudeau for giving terrorist operating space in Canada, says Trudeau's allegations are not consistent with India's policy and slams Canada for allowing organized crime and drug trafficking to flourish on its soil. Calling for continued engagement, Justin Trudeau softens his stand on India, describes India as an important economic and geopolitical power. The statement comes a day after the External Affairs Minister Jay Shankar's meeting with Anthony Blinken in Washington. But is it possible for Canada to restore normal ties with India? That's the big question. Justin Trudeau's approval tanks. 63% disapprove of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, while only 33% approve of him as per the latest poll by Independent Research Institute Angus Reid. The US government shutdown looms large as lawmakers remain divided on a spending plan. Speaker Kevin McCarthy tries to find middle ground, but nearly 4 million federal employees will not get paid until the US government reopens. Well, a big focus in another attack on Canada, which was dubbed a safe haven for terrorists by the centre last week. Dr. Jay Shankar has said that the country harbours extremist elements and that India has conveyed its concerns in this regard to the United States. Now, the comments come amid the simmering row between our countries, which was sparked when Justin Trudeau had claimed last week that Indian government agents were involved in the killing of Khalistani separatist Hardeep Singh Nijjar in British Columbia on Canadian soil in June. Now, our external affairs minister made the comments in response to a question during a discussion at a think tank in Washington. Listen in. Uh, what he was alleging was not consistent with our policy uh, and that if he had, if his government had anything relevant and specific they would like us to look into. In the last few years it has come back uh, very much into play uh, because of what we consider to be a very permissive uh, Canadian attitude towards uh, terrorists, uh, extremists, people who openly advocate violence. And they have been given operating space in Canada because of the compulsions of Canadian politics. For us, it has certainly been a country where uh, uh, organized crime from India uh, mixed with trafficking in people uh, mixed with secessionism, violence, terrorism. It's, it's a very uh, toxic combination uh, of issues and people uh, who have found uh, operating space there. Well, as India and Canada took their diplomatic row over Hardeep Singh Nijjar's killing into the rink at the UN General Assembly, for further clarity on the current state of affairs, joining us on India Global, Daniel Boardman, senior correspondent for the National Telegraph, also with us, Dr. Bharat Barai, member of Overseas Friends of BJB. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us on India Global. Mr. Boardman, I'd like to begin with you. You think the lack of full-blown support from Canada's traditional allies means that Canada is largely on its own here? Um, I, I, I see that, yeah, no one really wants to get involved with a major diplomatic row with an ally. And it's not like Canada's got no support. There's been minimal support, let's say. The bare minimum, the, the Western Alliance is held, the Five Eyes is, is kind of saying there is something, we're not sure what it was, there was some intelligence sharing. So it's not like Trudeau's been left with absolutely nothing from the Western Allies, but it's not enough, let's say, to go on. And I think Jay Shacker nailed it completely. Um, I think he watched, you know, the last 10 years of what I've been screaming about Canada's permissive attitude towards extremism and, and elements in, in all facts. And, and it doesn't just manifest in, in what you call terrorism, secessionist violence. There, there's drugs and, and gangs and organized crime. And 
I've been screaming because this is a problem for Canada, not just India. Yes, it's a problem for India because you have people advocating for violent secessionist uh, actions in the Punjab region, and that's in India. I understand. But the gang violence, the drug running, uh, you know, the the assassination attempts, that's Canadian soil. The Air India bombing, those are Canadian citizens. Uh, this is a Canadian problem. The, the Khalistani nonsense has to stop. It's it's corrosive to our country. You could argue it's, it's seditious behavior because it undermines a key <laughs> geopolitical alliance we have with India uh, to, to do all this. So Jay Shacker, in, in my view, is, is absolutely right. Since Trudeau's been in, it's been, it. I mean, a permissive attitude towards terrorism is it's putting it lightly. The only people he goes to bat for, it's Omar Carter, $10.5 million he gets rewarded, an actual terrorist, right? He meets with Josh Boyle, uh, and, 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 and now we go to DEFCON 1 over hardships in Najjar when Karima Baloch was just allowed to be strangled and thrown in a river, and we ruled that a suicide. So the, I think these are the real big problems that are coming to face Canada is our sort of lackadaisical attitude that we don't want to uh, deal with serious problems, especially when it involves two ethnic minorities uh, within our country. We, we just get too shut down and we, and we don't want to be called names and we, and, we, and we think it's too complicated. So we just ignore it. And doing so has let it fester for four decades. And now this Khalistani problem has metastasized outside of Canada and back into India. And it's causing us a major geopolitical rub. Right. This is bad. Right, so Justin Trudeau's lackadaisical attitude is in highlight, as Mr. Boardman has just mentioned. Dr. Barai, back home, Justin Trudeau has bigger worries, perhaps. Now, his approval rating has dropped largely due to food and real estate inflation. But take us through how he's being perceived on the ground as this row plays out. As far as NRIs in USA are concerned, they very much realize that he is acting like Rakhi Savant of Canada. He does not know what he is doing. He has problems at home. He commits the blunder. He wants to blame everything on everybody else. But the basic problem that he has been nurturing this Khalistani terrorist, he does not want to address it. And then he wants to pass it off as everything is okay in democracy. But this is a one-way thing. If I use Abraham Lincoln's definition of democracy, it's a government of the people, by the people, for the people. And here it has become a government of the Khalistanis, partly by the Khalistanis, and it works for the Khalistanis. The normal people, 1.1 million rest of the Hindus, Indian Americans or Indian Canadians who are staying there, they are complaining. Mr. Panunu is openly saying they should all quit Canada and go. He is a dual citizen, and except for Mr. LeBlanc passing a statement, he hasn't done anything more. Why can't they charge him with hate crime? Why can't they charge him with sedition or something else? So all this lip service really doesn't take him anywhere, and it does not give him any right. credibility. Mr. Boardman, now, like others, Canada actually saw India as a counterweight to China back in 2022 in its Indo-Pacific strategy. But you think Canada will need to concentrate on other fast growth economies in and out of the region now? I, I mean, I, I hope not. I hope we can fix this. There is no real substitute. Again, for India and China, you can't say, oh, we'll talk to Sri Lanka and Bangladesh and, and cobble it together with Bhutan and like, there's an India. It's not. Um, so I, that, that's a pipe dream. Yeah, I mean, Canada is a country that should be, all countries, helping our allies and countering our enemies. It's pretty simple. In Canada, we're doing the exact opposite. Like, the real story of foreign interference is how much influence does the CCP have over the Liberal Party of Canada? That's what we were trying to determine, you know, in, in our geopolitical corners before this whole row happened. So... Yeah, I, I, I've been talking about how we need India as a geopolitical and economic hedge against um, nefarious actors who, who don't love us, particularly China. But Justin Trudeau loves China, and the CCB in particular. In 2015, when he was running for office, he was asked what government he admired the most, and he's on the record saying the basic dictatorship of China. And he's been overly permissive with the CCP um, to the point where we have a scandal where the CCP is operating kind of freely, setting up police stations in our country, and liberal MPs are coming to events there. So, I mean, th th there's a there's a growing there's a bigger problem with Justin Trudeau's internal credibility on all these issues. Like he he has none, right? He he's he's 
been very permissive with the Islamic Republic of Iran. But Mr. Baldwin, what's the, the path to de-escalating this crisis then? Or you think things are likely to get worse? The path to de-escalating the crisis is the Khalistani issue has to be dealt with. It has to be dealt with seriously. And the path that is is probably removing Justin Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh. I mean, Jagmeet Singh is ideologically Khalistani. He has no problem sitting beside people who, who right beside him, advocate for violence against Hindus. He, he's no problem with that. Took him three tries to say blowing up the Air India plane was a bad thing, terrorism, and not a conspiracy done by the Indian government. He holds significant power in the current co coalition. And even Justin Trudeau's own MPs, Sikh MPs, have been trying to raise red flags about the Khalistani influence inside his own party. And he's done nothing. So I don't see India coming to the table as, and seeing Canada as a like, legitimate ally trading partner while we are the international hub of secessionist violence and balkanization of India. It, it makes no sense for India geopolitically to you know, engage and empower Canada when we're acting in a manner that is um, you know, increasing global belligerence towards India. It, it, and until this is dealt with, seriously in Canadian society, and we're not heading down that path. We are not talking about this in, in Canada. The media doesn't want to cover the videos of, of hardships in Najjar, you know, supporting suicide bombings, secessionists, ethnic violence, all of this. And I think you brought up Penu. Again, another guy just running around saying crazy things, threatening people, obviously breaking Canadian moral codes and potentially legal codes, and, and, we're, and we're twiddling our thumbs. And I think the Indian people, Canadian Hindus, feel rightfully gaslit on this issue because we do this Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian and, and hate is terrible, except when it is a Khalistani lunatic yelling about killing all the Hindus. And then all of a sudden he's a uh, religious leader and political activist who, who deserves the utmost prote protection of our security agencies. It's, it's maddening. And it's, it's driven Canadians crazy over the last eight years. And I think it's starting to drive uh, 1.5 billion people crazy on the other side of the pond. So, you know, how does let's this get sincerely solved? hope I think this crisis de-escalates. But thank you so much, gentlemen, for investing your time and joining us with your take on this diplomatic row on India Global. Well, meanwhile, as India asks Canada for credible evidence to back their bombshell allegation on the first day of their parliament, Maria spoke with the chief parliamentary advisor to the former Canadian Prime Minister, Stephen Harper. Here's what Gary Keller had to say. Gary Keller, Chief Parliamentary Advisor to the former Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper is joining us live. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Keller. India is asking for credible evidence that Prime Minister Trudeau said Canada has, and he said so on the floor of the House. But no information has been shared so far. Has there been an error of judgment on part of Justin Trudeau because he made that announcement inside Parliament? Well, I think it's a very good question. I think there's a lot of question about how the Canadian government has handled this situation publicly. Uh, I know from speaking to senior officials within the uh, government of Canada that uh, the most highest level officials have been on the ground several times in India over the previous uh, weeks leading up to uh, the G20 summit and to the prime minister's announcement, providing India with uh, intelligence and information uh, which they say uh, lays out the Prime Minister's case. Uh, but of course, this information, uh, which we've heard also from other sources, which was uh, you know gathered from uh, s signals intelligence and other intelligence, it would be of a, a certain classified nature. Um, and so I guess the question really is, why did the Prime Minister do what he did in terms of his uh, of the process of doing this? Uh, and I think that's the question that uh, some of the opposition parties have been, uh, asking in the House of Commons as well to say, you know, w w let's see more evidence uh, because what the Prime Minister put out there is obviously quite a bombshell statement and certainly rocked uh, not just the Canada-India relationship, but uh, the the wider discussion about Canada's role uh, in the Indian Pacific. Is this domestic political calculation then that is making Justin Trudeau take this path of direct confrontation which really doesn't follow the right diplomatic protocol? Well, it's another good question. And I, I think it's less perhaps than about domestic politics that one might be thinking about in sort of the Canada-India context and more about the, the past recent history of the Trudeau government in dealing with uh, allegations of foreign interference. As your viewers may know, over the past uh, number of months, 
uh, going back almost a year. There have been accusations of Chinese interference in Canadian elections in 2019 and 2021 elections. Um, and the government's response to that really over the past number of months has been it's sensitive, it's classified, we can't talk about it. Uh, parliamentarians don't have a right to see some of the evidence. Uh, we're going to appoint a, a special rapporteur to look at this, but otherwise not a very public facing uh, approach to putting the information out there. Now, the government has taken a lot of heat for that. They've taken a lot of criticism for that. So in this case, they may have felt, look, that has not helped us uh, in, with Canadians who are asking for answers. We're going to do this a different way in this case, and we're going to put the allegation out there and uh, and and do it in that approach and tell Canadians that we believe we have uh, evidence uh, and 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 we're going to make that public. Uh, so uh, again, it may be in a different context than uh, you and your viewers might be actually thinking about in terms of domestic politics. Mr. Keller, Indian agencies have been taking action carrying out raids against Khalistani terrorists, the handlers who are there in India. Dossiers have been shared with governments as well. My question is, does Canada not realize the threat that Khalistan, what India says Khalistan terrorists pose? Well, I think certain segments of Canada and the Canadian political system does recognize that Canada does have a, a challenge and a problem when it comes to those advocating for uh, a violent uh, action and pro Khalistani uh, sentiment. You know, we've seen these fake referendums organized in parts of Canada with large Sikh populations, both in the Greater Toronto Area and the Lower Mainland of Vancouver. Um, and those have been very pointed and very aggressive campaigns. We've seen threats made, uh, public threats against Indian diplomats in Canada to the, to the point where uh, the government of Canada has had to step up uh, security and protection of Indian diplomats here in Canada. Um, and, and this is the challenge that Canada and India have had, not just now, but going back many, many years in how Canada uh, deals with its problem. Canada says, you know, we believe in freedom of expression uh, and, you know, people have a right to say certain things. Uh, even if they are uh, construed as violent, India says that is uh, those are acts of an accusation of terrorism against India, uh, and we demand that Canada crack down on it. So there, for many many years and over many many governments, there is a difference of opinion on how Canada should handle the Khalistani issue and, and calls for violence. Uh, but now, you know, I think we're seeing that um, as as the Khalistani calls in Canada amongst the community kind of they, they wax and they wane over time. I think they've been on the increase lately. You've seen a much more aggressive presence by pro-Khalistani sentiments in, in Toronto and Vancouver advocating. And I think it's important for you know Canadians to know that while those sentiments are being expressed in, in, in Canada, there's almost no support whatsoever for an independent Khalistan within India. And I think that is one thing that Canadians aren't very aware of uh, and that cert certainly Canadians could be more aware of uh, given that, you know, there is strong, strong sentiment for a united India in India. Thank you for speaking to NDTV, sir. So the image of Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's plane stalled on the tarmac in New Delhi was perhaps a foreshadowing of the freeze in Canada-India relations to come. But Justin Trudeau has said Canada is very serious about building closer ties with India, as it's a growing economic power and important geopolitical player, he added. He wants New Delhi to work with Ottawa to ensure that they get the full facts about Hardeep Singh Nijjar's killing. But this, as Dr. Jay Shankar and the US Secretary of State Antony Blinken met in Washington amidst this diplomatic row. They discussed a full range of issues, including Canada's allegations, but there was no mention of Canada or Hardeep Singh Nijjar in the official readouts from both countries. Secretary Blinken is going ahead with this meeting with the Indian counterpart, uh, despite the allegations that Canada is making. Oh, I think it's extremely important that all of us continue to engage uh, constructively and, and uh, uh, seriously. Uh, with the government of India. Uh, India is a growing economic power and important uh, geopolitical player. Uh, and you know, as we presented with our Indo-Pacific strategy uh, just last year, we're very serious about building closer ties uh, with India. 
Justin Trudeau clearing the air on the Jay Shankar Blinken bilateral in New York. The two leaders met in the run-up to the India-US 2 plus 2 dialogue scheduled for October end. But the question top of the mind was whether the two leaders would discuss Trudeau's allegations of credible intelligence pointing to Indian government's involvement in Hardeep Singh Nidjar's killing. And I actually look forward to seeing you in Delhi for 2 plus 2. Going by the statements issued by both sides, the matter didn't come up. So why the hawk's eye on the Jay Shankar Blinken bilateral? Well, thanks to the intelligence sharing pact called Five Eyes between the US, UK, Canada, Australia and New Zealand, three of the five allies have been urging India to cooperate with Canada's investigation into the killing of Hardeep Singh Nijjar, a designated terrorist, Khalistan supporter and a Canadian citizen since 2015. We heard from the Canadian Prime Minister publicly about the allegations. We support the efforts that they are undertaking in this investigation, and we have also been in touch with the Indian government as well. We have deep concerns about the allegations, and we would like to see this investigation carried forward and the perpetrators held to account. These are concerning uh, reports, uh, and I note that investigations are still underway. Uh, but obviously, uh, these are concerning reports, and as I've said, yeah, we have, we are monitoring these developments closely with our partners, uh, and will continue to do so. Uh, India has clearly maintained that it is willing to cooperate with Canada, provided they share evidence, something that hasn't happened so far. Meanwhile, Canadian media reports have also raised questions about Nijjar's killing, as well as the investigations into it. Quoting Balraj Nijjar, her deep son. The Vancouver Sun reports that Hardeep Singh Nijjar met CSIS, Canada's intelligence service, every week before his killing. This new angle puts a question mark on Trudeau's allegation of Indian government's agents being involved. Last week, Washington Post accessed CCTV footage of Nijjar's killing, which captures something that resembles a gang war. Witnesses and security camera footage viewed by the Post reveal a more complex operation to kill Hardeep Singh Nijjar than authorities have previously described, again raising questions on the India involvement angle. And it isn't just Indian and the Canadian media questioning Trudeau's credible intelligence claims. Canada's opposition leader, whose Conservative Party's leading opinion polls against Trudeau's Liberal Party, has also torn into Justin Trudeau's claims. I think the Prime Minister needs to come clean with all the facts. We need to know all the evidence possible so that Canadians can make judgments on that. He didn't tell me any more in private than he told Canadians in public, so we want to see more information. A downward spiraling economy battling inflation, as well as a housing crisis, Canada led by Trudeau seems to have hit hard times. Justin Trudeau heads for polls in these unhappy circumstances. Trudeau's government is propped up by Khalistan supporting Jagmeet Singh's NDP. Many claim these political compulsions are behind Justin Trudeau's allegations against India. But as of today, this move of dragging the Indian government into Nijjar's killing seems to be backfiring for him both at home and abroad. With Srishti Shankar, Bureau Report, NDTV.